So what we're going to talk about today is mini crawlers. Uh, as you see, I have a selection of mini crawlers here. Um, basically, what I've got here is pretty much 1 16th, 1 18th, and 1 24th scale. There is a little bit smaller, and there is like 1 12th, and I think some might be some 1 14ths out there. So, okay, so I'm going to talk about these in the spectrum of least expensive to most expensive. Um, the nice thing about the mini crawlers is that they're much less expensive to buy and run than a like a one tenth scale. Uh, you know, like a one tenth scale, a decent one tenth scale crawler. You know, you're looking three, four hundred bucks at least. You know, and then you know you got the price of the lipos. You got to buy a decent charger. Um, but we'll get into that a little more. Okay, so, like I said, I'm going to start on the inexpensive end. Okay, so, one of the inexpensive trucks that you can get is these WPLs. Uh, they're basically, they're just slightly above toy grade, and you can get replacement parts for them. Um, so basically what that means is you can pick these trucks up for like as as low as like $50. Um, and um, have fun with them. Um, however, um, you, can, uh, you can also upgrade them over time, but you got to order the parts from China. Uh, now, for, at the price point, you do sacrifice some things. Like when one of the things about the WPLs is the steering radius is not that great and the tires are extremely hard they're like a plastic hard okay but you can't upgrade them uh this one's a stock one okay and then I've got like got this one it's got metal drive shafts and um, uh, metal suspension links and a lot of these upgrades are fairly inexpensive um, see, and then you can go into like this, where they have metal axles and a two-speed transmission. Um, WPL makes kits. Uh, they have, a, they'll have a, you know, like a C24K, which is a kit, which is the, basically it's the same as the, uh, or pretty close to what the, the ready-to-runs are. Um. And, but you got to come up with your own electronics. Uh, you can either buy theirs or put it in your own. Okay, so basically the spec of this one. This one was originally a ready-to-run. But over time, I upgraded it with the metal axles and whatnot. And so it's essentially a KM kit, which the KM kit is a kit that has metal parts. Um, which I'll talk about this one. I've got this. Basically, this is a Bob Deuce and a half. This thing's got some weight to it. Uh, basically, this particular KM kit had the two-speed transmission, metal drive shafts, metal axles. Um, it's got weights in the wheels uh, to keep it upright, keep it upright and not flip over. Uh, one benefit, however, of the kits is they have softer tires. Uh, not super soft, but definitely softer than. The ready-to-run tires, which are pretty hard. Um, and they make a few different models. This is a C24-1. This is a C24. Uh, the beater truck that I'm building here is a what they call a C14. And this is what they call a B14. Uh, the C in with the WPL stands for civilian rig. Uh, then they, they have a bunch of different military rigs. Um, which is what this is. This is a military rig. Uh, they also make a, a, ver a three-axle version of that truck, and they also make other versions of military trucks. They even have one with tracks on it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, and then they also have some other rigs um, that are a little bit nicer, like the, the C54-1. Uh, and basically what you're going to run into motor size-wise is stock, these are going to have uh, a little 180 in them. Uh, the older ones had a 130, and were the they were not proportional uh, steering and throttle. If you're unfamiliar with what proportion, proportional 
steering and throttle is, is basically, I'm sure a lot of people have played with like the toy ones you get at Walmart. Uh, so basically throttle on those, you hit the throttle, it's full throttle. And then the steering is, it's full left, full right. There is no in between. Uh, now with the proportionals, what you get with the proportional is that the, the throttle, the amount of throttle you get depends on how much you squeeze the trigger. You can squeeze the trigger a little bit and go really, really slow. You can just, you know, just squeeze it and it'll go fast. And, and that's the, the added benefit of proportional. Your more expensive RC cars are proportional. Um, now, one thing about these is the electronics. Well, the electronics on, a lot, on pretty much all your minis are going to be a two-in-one with the receiver and the ESC in the same unit. Uh, they will, however, have a separate servo for the steering. Uh, the electronics on these particular ones are not sealed. These uh, the WPLs are not really waterproof. They could probably take a little bit of a, sp you know, you could probably get a little splash on there, but the electronics are exposed. They're not sealed up in any way. You take the body off and it's essentially a, uh, just a circuit board in there with everything plugged into it. Uh, and then also, taking the bodies off, one of the WPLs, you got four, four screws here, two screws there, uh, and then you can take the body off and kind of wiggle the body out of there. Uh, and then the bed is, and then the bed is like another three screws to take the bed off, okay? Uh, and typically, what these have for hardware is these, most of these, the hardware that comes with them is a small Phillips screwdriver, okay? So, with the truck, they give you this little cheap screwdriver, okay? That I would honestly throw away and try to find yourself a not, much nicer style screwdrivers to work with, uh, or even like a good tool kit. Uh, that you can get, like some MIP stuff or something like that, you can get a nice screwdriver that won't strip out the screws. Okay. So the batteries on the WPLs, okay, they're a lithium ion, actually, uh, which they are a 500 milliamp hour. Okay. The truck is a 1 16th scale truck. Okay. Just to let you know. And this is what you get for a charger, a USB charger that plugs into a USB port. Uh, I use like a cell phone adapt a, a cell phone wall adapter, and I'll plug it in there and charge the battery off that. It has some lights that tell you where the battery is charged or is charging, uh, and basically where it plugs into is like a, the balance port of what would be the battery, uh, even though it's I think it's a lithium ion. Okay, and then from there, okay, we're gonna move over to here to the one twenty four scale. Okay. Uh, these are made by Axial. There are other couple, couple other companies that, that make them as well. Uh, in fact, actually, they do comps with 124 scale stuff. Because uh, actually, the 124 scale stuff is actually pretty popular. Um, they're, I mean, they're a good little size truck to really have a lot of fun with. You know, drive them around in the house. Uh, and I mean, there's all kinds of upgrades from this. You can get it at your local hobby shop. And you could buy the truck at the local hobby shop, too. The WPLs, you can get them at the local hobby shop if they stock them, which mine does. Uh, but the parts are China. Okay, so these... Okay, so the WPLs are what's called a hard body. It's a hard plastic body, okay? And it has... Uh, they have interiors in them. Uh, they're quite detailed. You can do... So you could do like I painted the interior in that one. It's pretty cool, you know. But let's go back to the 124 scales. So the 124 scales, they're, some are hard body, some are like sand body. These ones I have here, this is the Axial uh, SCX-10-24. Uh, okay, and the, one, the two examples I got here, they make a lot of different versions of it. There's, you can get Jeeps, you can get four-wheel drive crawlers, you can get, I think they have power wagons, you know, like a Dodge power wagon. They have, you know, I've, I've, Pretty good little selection of what you can get. Uh, this particular one is a deadbolt. They actually make a one-tenth one scale version of the deadbolt. 
um, which is actually an SCX-10 2 chassis. Um, and so basically, these got really soft tires out of the box. Uh, and these will typically run, these run anywhere from, uh, I'm going to say, depending on where you buy them, 100 to 135 or so, depending on which one you get. Uh, some of the Jeeps and stuff, like the Gladiator, are a little more expensive. Um, but they're a little more, a lot more detailed uh, than that. Uh, like I said, they do, they do uh, um, comps with these. Uh, one thing this and the WPLs have in common is that they have what are called friction shocks, which is just basically a shock with a spring uh, either inside or outside. Uh, there's no dampening there. Okay, and okay, the these. There is no foams in the tires, but the and they're not bead locks, but the tires are glued to the wheels. Okay, your WPLs they're not glued, they're not bead locks, they're not nothing. Uh, generally, if you get some soft tires for them, you're gonna either need to buy some some bead locks or glue them on like these. Okay, and so on these, the way you do the body is you take these two clips out and it. And it uh, hinges up, which is kind of really kind of nice. Uh, and in the event you do lose the the pins, what some people will do is they'll uh, do a Velcro setup on it to, on the front just to hold the body down. Uh, and then these the uh, the WPLs have working headlights. These have lights in the bumpers that work. Um, and again, uh, okay, so the suspension on this is very similar. Kind of the WPL. They got plastic drive shafts. You got um, you got triangulated links. Uh, it's, I think we got four link front and back on this, or a three link in the front. I'm not sure. It's hard to see in this light that I have here in my room. Um, but yeah, this is a nice little rig. And then the other one that I got here is a what they call a C10. Uh, okay, which is a pretty nice little rig. Which that was the one I originally wanted. Okay, so on this one, okay, you got you get a USB charger, just like that, just like kind of on the WPL. This is probably a little bit nicer one though, and you get a bag with some extra drive shaft pieces and an Allen wrench, uh, and then the battery that you get is a 2S LiPo, a pretty flat looking 2S LiPo. Uh, they have other LiPos you can get. Uh, it has this style connector. Uh, for the battery, uh, which is uh, basically real similar, which is basically the same as a charging plug on the WPLs. Okay. Um, and, uh, oh so yeah, you get that. That's what you get with the truck. Uh, you can get other batteries for it, which are pretty cool. Um, lots of runtime on these, uh, especially if you get a bigger battery. The battery that comes with them is is uh, 350 milliamp hours. Uh, I have some that are 400 milliamp hours. You can go all the way up to like a 700, which would give you an insane amount of runtime. Uh, WPLs, I think I get, I think I get about 20 minutes out of those. Uh, these ones you can get an hour at least, uh, depending on how you're driving them. Uh, not bad little rigs. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for something small, would definitely recommend that one. Okay, and then our most expensive example here is a 1 18th scale Traxxas TRX4M High Trail. Uh, they do make some versions of this truck that are a little less expensive. Uh, these trucks start about 135, uh, 135 range, all the way up to... Um, you find them as low as that, and they go all the way up to like 180 bucks. Okay, and then oh, one, another thing about these, I keep jumping around, sorry guys. Batteries for these are about 15 bucks for extra batteries. Oh, not that expensive. Okay, so this thing, okay, um, it's 1 18th scale. Like I said, I ended up spending about 200 bucks on this truck. I bought, because I bought the truck and I bought an extra battery at my local hobby shop, and it was 200 bucks. Uh, this particular truck, the body is 
little tabs that hold the body on, okay? And this is this is a hard body, okay? A 79 Ford body here with a roll bar, and it's got uh, lights, as you can see the wire there, uh, which you can see the battery in there. It's got an ESC back there, which is waterproof. And also the W, the uh, axials are also uh, waterproof as well. Uh, they got a really, really small motor in it. Uh, it's like a .50 or something like that in the in these. Okay, this is the same size motor as the WPLs, and it is a 87 turn. The motors in the WPLs are unknown. They can't really find any spec on them. Uh, and then this has. Uh, servo on axle construction as well. The WPLs have chassis uh, mounted on the chassis and they do have some some steering issues Okay, okay, and the tires on the the tires stock tires on this are very very soft uh, Surprisingly very very soft now one difference from the other trucks is that these are oil filled shocks uh, as opposed to the friction shocks on the other two uh, but then again for what you're paying, it's, you know, you're hitting more bells and whistles with it. Okay, but this truck, okay, the battery, you get a 2S LiPo with 750 milliamp hours, which you get at least an hour out of there. Uh, you also get uh, a little uh, T-wrench, uh, Allen wrench, and a couple shock spacers. Actually, two Allen wrenches in there, two different sizes, okay. And the charger... For this one, okay, is what they call an ID uh, 2S LiPo charger, um, and it also, it goes to the actual, there is no balance port on the Traxxas batteries, and it, it has a, a its own, where's that at, it has its own plug, uh, which kind of makes it a little weird to, to get other batteries for this other than Traxxas. Uh, that's the downside with the Traxxas stuff. Um, but this is a very nice truck, very capable truck, along with the WP, along with the, these are very capable. Uh, the, and then the body just snaps on like that. That is one thing I do like about this Traxxas, is that no pins, and the body just clips on. It's easy to get on and off, to put your batteries in or whatnot, or even put a different body on it if you like, if you trash the body and put a different body on there. Um, and again, this be, this particular model doesn't have a lot of upgrades out yet. This is a fairly new, the High Trail is a fairly new model. The TRX-4M has only been out for, I don't even think, it, probably close to a year or less. Uh, you know, it hasn't been out very long. This has been a fairly new model. Um, now these, these SCX-24s, they've been out for a while. Uh, they've been out for at least a year or possibly two, maybe. I don't remember exactly. And these WPLs have been around for a long time. They've been around they've been around for six, seven, eight years at least. Really the only thing that changed on them is they put proportional electronics in them um, to make them a little more user friendly. Because um, the old ones of these, they ran on nickel metal hydride batteries that were six volt. Uh, which that's all you can use in them um, and they're non-proportional going back to what I said in the beginning about toy grade stuff and those are in my mind toy grade they started out as toy grade and they've, they've kind of upped their game a lot you know but depending on what your budget is uh, yeah I mean they're all I think they're all a good choice uh, now one thing that is I failed to mention about this thing that's really nice is it's got crazy tight steering radius on that um in fact i don't i don't even think the scx24 wheels turn that even as far as the uh, trx4 on the on these scx24s but but no pretty nice um and then as far as battery access these body the, the body either hinges up or comes off. These, now for the WPLs, for the little Toyota pick, pickups, you got 
to go in the toolbox in the back. If you're wondering what this round thing is, this is a speaker. This one has a, a sound card in it uh, to make, well, you can say vroom vroom sounds. Who <laughs> would say that in this in this uh, thing? It's a sound card and it makes sounds, and then it, it, it controls the two-speed transmission and whatnot. Uh, they're kind of a little interesting like that. One thing that really kills, kills on these, though, is ground uh, ramp over angle. That two-speed transmission really hangs down there, and these things high, seem to high center very easily with the two-speed transmission. Okay, to where the, the high trail actually has some pretty good ground clearance along with um, the... Like, if you look at this deadbolt, that's got really good ramp over angle. Um, so, you're not going to get it high centered as easily as if that transfer case stuck down there. Um, and then, I mean, even with this, same thing. They're essentially the same chassis, as my understanding. So, uh, yeah. So, at this, you know, it's up to you at this point what you want to do as far as, you know, how much you want to spend. Um, and, you know, my personal opinion, yes, I love all these trucks. Don't get me wrong. But in my personal opinion, um, if you're being a little, but depending on what your budget is, I would kind of go middle of the road here, which is this, these things, they're small. You can run them in the house. Um, and the cost is, you know. Not, I mean, it's a fraction of, it's not as much as this thing, the $200, you know. You can find these online for like 100 bucks. You know, you buy a battery for 15 bucks, you're in it almost for almost half the price of what, of what I paid for this. Uh, and these are fun little rigs. They're very popular rigs. They do comps with these. Um, and really the 118th scale is kind of an odd duck. Uh, there's not a lot of 18, 118th scale your main, really your main popular uh, scales are 1 16th, as far as RC in general, 1 16th, 1 24th, 1 10th, and then you get into the bigger stuff, the 1 8th, and we're not going to address that here. Um, and the last few notes on here, for those of you that are getting started um, in here, one thing I would highly recommend, especially with your batteries, is get an ammo box and put all your batteries in the ammo box. One, it'll protect them. And if for, if something happens with one of your batteries, whether it's the lipo um, or the lith or lithium ion batteries, if something happens, and one of these batteries blows up. Yeah, you might lose one or two of your other batteries, maybe worst case scenario. But the important thing is you will not be burning down your house. Uh, I would highly recommend a lipo bag or an ammo box such as this with the seal removed to protect the place you live uh, you know it's it's not worth losing your whole house over you know a $200 RC car in my book um, you know oh you lose you know you lose you know you lose twenty thirty dollar battery not a big deal uh, if they're bigger batteries you know they're like maybe hundred at the most um, you know, and so you don't lose your house and all your RCs being this contained. Um, and one last thing I'm going to touch on is tools. I'm going to touch on tools a little bit. Now I showed you some tools that come with these rigs. Okay. If you're going to work on these a lot, one thing I would recommend, uh, depending on what size the fasteners are, if they're like a one five or uh, or like this uh, 2.5 millimeter. If they're that, if they're these size. Highly recommend MIP. Buy quality tools to work on them. Um, now the SCX 24s. You will need this 1.0 um, um, hex uh, wrench here. And it's a 0 .050. Uh, this one's a dynamite one. This is what they had at the hobby shop. Uh, you might be able to find these in uh, MIP as well, but again, quality. 
uh, for when if you wrench a lot. Uh, I do not like using the Allen, just the little Allen keys that come with them. They're cumbersome and they strip out fairly easy because they're not a real quality hardened steel. They're just cheaply made. They throw it in there to get you started. But, but uh, no, I love these things. These things are awesome. Uh, and especially, you know, especially these, the little more expensive ones. Again, RC is something you get what you pay for. Uh, but in my mind, even a WPL is worlds better than something you buy at Walmart. Uh, being that these are proportional, you can do stuff with them. You can get parts for them. And you can actually work on them because you can actually... Got screws. You can take it apart. You know, your, your new bright stuff... They're all tabbed together. You try to get into them, you break stuff. Um, I've gone that route a long, long time ago. I was playing with some new bright stuff, and they just didn't hold up. I had some new... And actually, my first foray into crawlers was with um, a couple of 114th scale, uh, a Bronco, and a Jeep, and they just didn't last. I ended up scattering axles in them and stuff and stripping out gears and... And, you know, for 30 bucks, was it worth it? You know, you spend a little bit more money, or they're probably, they might even be 40 bucks now, I don't remember. But you find one of these on, like, AliExpress or someplace, you know, for, like, 50, 60 bucks. World's better. Definitely world's better than what you're going to find. Um, yeah, and, again, a little bit of this video is aimed at you people that are getting started in the hobby. Um, and then also budget options um, out there, you know. Uh, me personally, you know, I, I don't have a lot of extra income to buy. I mean, I would love to have the 110 scale version of this truck. But at 550 bucks, it is just not feasible for me to buy that truck. Uh, some people say, oh, well, if you know, if you, if you save up all your money and you the only problem is, I live in an apartment, okay? That's another thing where the minis shine. If, if you have a living situation where you don't have land to play on, or you're not able to get out and play at the local spots very much. Uh, or, you know, do them around the house, flower gardens, the apartment, or whatever. But you can. You can take them out to the spots, though, too. People run them out there, too. Um, but one thing that's nice about the small ones is the parts are the parts are inexpensive they're inexpensive to purchase the parts are inexpensive and especially if you're getting started in the hobby and you decide you don't like it you know you throw the thing up there you sell it for a hundred bucks get some of your money back okay you know one ten one ten scale that's a big chunk of money and you take a pretty good hit uh when you sell something being that you know, RCs are even like full-size cars. You know, you buy a full-size car, you drive it off the lot, automatically depreciates, you know. Basically, as soon as you run one of these, it depreciates. Uh, it's considered used at that point, which value, you might be able to get three quarters of what you paid for it if you're lucky. Uh, typically, I've seen a lot of these go for about half of what you pay for them, or I've seen some that are quite modified that go for more money. Uh, in fact, buying these two, I recently, in some of my older videos, you will see uh, I had a Rock Pirates uh, base camp build. Uh, the problem I have is my 110 scale rigs, I never use them. Uh, and so I elected to sell my Rock Pirates build uh, through my local hobby shop. And that's where these came in. Uh, that's how I bought these. Uh, I bought both at the same time. I bought them this morning. Um, and really, I had a lot. I had over a, a lot of money in that in that base camp. Over, If you include the price of what I paid for the truck, I probably had about 1200 bucks in it. I got 400 So that should tell you some depreciation if you're a person that's getting started in this hobby. Um, you know, and these, if you break them, you know, they're not taking up a lot of space. You, you know, you, you throw it on the shelf. Eventually, you get a little bit of extra money and fix it. And 
you're good to go again. Or during the winter time, if you, if you know, if you're an older person like I am in your fifties, I'm in my fifties. Yes, um, going outside sometimes is hard, uh, especially when you start getting arthritis like myself. Going outside, you know, if it's you know ten twenty degrees outside, no, no, you you ain't gonna be out there for very long before stuff starts hurting. Um, again, another reason that I like these. But uh, I think I'll go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Uh, probably rambled on too long here uh, on the subject, but but uh, hopefully somebody gets some useful information uh, out of it. I really, really through these videos, I'm trying to share uh, my experiences, uh, my knowledge uh, with other people that might not be experienced in it. So um, you know, if anybody. Uh, you have any questions feel free to comment uh if you're liking my content uh, feel free to subscribe and if you really like this video pa pound that like button and if you want to and you if you and then you can the nice thing with the subscribe also is you'll be able to see when i post more videos which i do pretty try to do pretty regularly but uh thanks for watching and listening to my rambling on uh but uh yeah, get out, you know, get you one of these. If you don't have any RC cars, get out there and get one of these. And go out and enjoy it. Run around the living room. Run over the cat. Run over shoes. May, take some expanded foam and make a little course out of it. Another thing that's really nice about these really, really small ones is you can make a, a course in a very limited amount of space. Um, you know, I've seen people where they take it like a bedroom. They have a bedroom and they just have like a little course they made in there mounted to boards um, and that's where they run um, and locally you might even be able to find somebody that makes little little uh, uh, obstacles to crawl over uh, which somebody sells in my local hobby shop which they're pretty cool they're about 200 bucks but anyways thanks for watching get out there and play with MRCs